Once again, welcome everybody to our class. In this class, we're going to talk about the first conditional in the advanced level. And let's begin. So everybody, do you know anything about first conditionals? Can anyone tell me what is first conditionals? When do we use it? How do we use it? What is it about? Many, many things like this. Someone's typing, so yes, let's Let's see if anyone knows here. Joss is super human. Okay, that's nice. And Sharon and others, yes, please start typing. Because if you just sit there, I always say it at the beginning of every my, uh, my classes. If you just sit there and watch me and listen to me, that's nothing. You will, you will learn nothing. Just wasting your time, but you should interact. I. What does it mean, I? It's a statement that always true. Are you sure about that? Just a superhuman statement that always true. If okay, if what? The whole grammar means if. Could you give me some examples? Could you elaborate? Explain more? Let's see if you know anything. Welcome everybody who are joining us. We've just began. Begun. We are gonna talk about. First conditionals, but the advanced level. So that would be great to share. Now I have a question asking you that what is first conditional? This is my question. What is first conditionals? Many people are typing. Aha, uh -huh, that's good. Make sure you're interacting because the more you interact, the more you will learn rather than just sitting there and watch, watching me. So people are typing. I think it would be a long statement. I mean, it's statement that describe obvious consequent of some event. For example, just a superhuman. For example, give me some sentences. If and then. Oh, then. Okay, so we can use then. Okay, that's good. Several people. That's lovely. Let's see. Phrases with if and present simples. Okay, okay, okay. How about giving me an example, huh? Hello, professor. Nice to see you again. Hello, prize. Once again, I'm not a professor for sure. I'm just a teacher. You can call me teacher. That's much better. And thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you again, too. Price. Uh, others. Go, go is typing. No idea. You have no idea about it. If you try, if you study hard, you will become successful. Uh huh. Okay. So Gavi say it's always true because someone said always true. Just just a superhuman says it's a statement that always true. So can we say this sentence is always true? Is it correct to say? Several people good. So yeah, I. At the beginning, let's have something like a brainstorming together to see what's ahead, and let's then move to the PDF. Not always true. Uh -huh. So Sharon has an opposite idea toward just a superhuman statement. It's not always true. Uh huh. Okay. It's ah uh -huh. mm -hmm. for the future. Supposition for future. Okay, okay. Thank you, Ludwig. Dreamer and Renan are typing. The last people. Then we will move in to the move on to the PDF. Dapa, right? Dapa is also typing. Okay. What about others? We have many other students. Thirty-one student. What about you guys? What are your opinions? Please share it with us. You're learning here, so it's okay if you have some mistake. That's all right. Uh -huh. uh, Nina is typing too. Thank you, Nina, for typing. And several people. That's cool. That's cool. That OTP, I think. Yeah, another person is typing. It's possible to happen. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Thanks for coming. Anyone else? So let's move. To the PDF, shall we? I had uh, I had to search about it. Never saw the term before. Okay, Rena, that's cool. 
So today we will, you will see the term and others. Let's begin, huh? Please. Also, you can also type. I will, I will check the chat again to read your opinions. But let's move to the PDF. So, English. So, okay. You know the title. It says, let me change it to this and to this. First conditionals is an intermediate grammar topic. Yes, but we'll also, we will talk about it in the advanced level two. We will talk about some advanced things we can add. At the end of the lesson, we will talk about the first conditionals. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. What is a conditional? This is the first question. A conditional comes from condition. A conditional is a sentence that expresses a hypothetical situation and the likely outcome that would result if that situation were to occur. This is the meaning of a conditional sentence. For example, you say, what are your conditions? You know, for example, you're going to do something. You say, okay, what are your conditions? Means what do you want if you want to do this job? If you do this task, what do you want in return? Something like, say, what are your conditions? I have some conditions, for example. But... Okay, we understood the condition is that, okay, for example, you do something, you will see the result in the future. Or if you did something in the past, you would have something in the, in the present. Or both of them in the past, or many other things. But how many types of conditional do we have? This is my question. How many types of conditionals do we have? Four. Okay. Two. That plus is two. Okay. What else? Four, two, maybe three, maybe five, maybe one. Future and present, three conditionals. Reward, uh, no, no, no. Conditional, we can say, is, is something that requires you if you want to have the result. If you want to pass your exam, you're required to study hard. It's not a reward. The reward is the result. But if you study hard, the condition, you will pass your exam. That's your reward, or we call it result. Three conditionals. Okay, okay. One, if, four. Oh, I get it now. That's cool. So which one? Someone says one, someone says two, three, four. What about five, six? With if and with, no, no, no. I mean types of conditionals. Conditional zero, one, two, and three. Okay, are you sure you're not missing anything? The one, uh, A, B, ball. There's also something, but thank you. That was nice. So, yeah, as your friend said, we have four main types of conditional in English. Zero conditionals, first conditional, second conditional, third conditionals, and we have mixed conditional, which is another type of conditional sentences in English that we combine elements from different types of conditionals. For example, the we will talk about clauses in first conditionals. You can use second and third, I mean, if the if clause, main clause, and vice versa. So they call it mixed. Some books uh, say that we have two types of mixed conditionals, which is, for example, second and first, uh, second and third, or third and second. But many books, which I believe that's more better, uh, they say that, that's much better, say that we have one mixed conditional and we can replace the clauses. So zero, first, second, third. Okay, what is zero conditionals? Anyone knows? Zero conditionals. Uh, Luffy, uh, Monkey D. Luffy, if you want to talk, please, at the end of the class, I'll grant permissions to talk, okay? Nowadays, you gotta say nowadays. And uh, now, let's please keep it chat based. Thank you very much. If clause plus simple present, are you sure? I'm talking about the zero, the zero type. The facts, zero, zero, okay. The, f the facts, the known fact. Mm hmm, yes, yes. As you know, when something is always true, for example, if you, if you hit water, it boils. If you hit water, it boils. If you, I don't know, hit ice, it melts. Something like this. Some facts that is that are always true about something, we can say zero conditional. We are not going to talk about zero conditional, second or third or mixed. We're going to talk about the first. So... Uh, actually, in this PDF, we will be learning the first conditionals only. Also, maybe you're wondering how you can get the PDF for free or something like this. In my website, if you check out my website, 
I have the PDFs for free. Let me just write it down. Okay, if, if you just head over to the PDF channel, the PDF page, you can you can actually get access to many free uh, videos and video and, and PDF there, so that could be useful for you. So first conditionals, okay. There are a type of conditional sentences that express a possible, not always true. One of our friends says always true, no. And someone says it's possible, thank you. Expresses a possible or likely event or situation in the future. Aha, uh -huh, this is important. Based on a certain condition in the present. So we have some keywords here. Present, future, possible or likely. And a uh, certain condition, I already highlighted. For example, you say here, if you study hard, you will pass the exam or your exam. So we have a condition. If you study hard, this is our condition. If you study hard, one of our friends said reward. Yes, as a reward, as a result, in English we say, you will pass the exam. So you have, for example, chemistry exams and you know nothing about chemistry so I said okay if you study hard or this is if you study condition if you study you will pass the exam and there is a chance there is a, it is possible to pass the exam but if you don't study I can tell you that you're gonna fail for sure because that's pretty obvious if it rains we will say indoors maybe it doesn't rain but if it rains if we have the condition that's our result. We will stay indoors. If I have time, well, I'm, I'm a busy person, but if I have time, sure, I'll call you later. If you don't hurry, you will miss the bus. Hmm? We use miss the bus, not lose the bus, miss the bus. So if you don't hurry, if you don't hurry, this is a condition. Well, you don't care, you don't hurry, and so you miss your bus. If she gets the job, she'll move to a new city. Well, provided that, we say, that's a condition. If she gets the job, she will move. If she doesn't get the job, if she, for example, she she get she gets rejected in the application, in the interview, well, she won't move to a new city, obviously. And if we finish earlier, we will, early, we will have time to watch it, to watch, for example, a movie or something. If you keep, thank, thanks for our reactions, thank you very much. If you keep training, you will get stronger. Something like this, yeah. So if you study hard, you will pass the exam. You need to do something in order to get that uh, kind of result you want, passing your exams. But there are two clauses in conditionals. We have if clause and main clause. The clause which contains the word if and shows the condition, we also can call it, you can also call it conditional clause. The, so we have it as a conditional clause of if clause and the tense of it is present simple or in better words we can say present tense because we can use present like uh, for example present perfect in our first clause in our first uh, conditional is the if clause I, I will show you some examples but we call it if clause because we have the word if and we can call it conditional clause because it shows and it contains condition. And we have the main clause, which shows a result or reward. In some cases, our friend mentioned that. And the tense is future simple. And or future tense. We can also use sort of part of future uh, tense in our first conditional. So if clause, main clause. Here, for example, let's talk about the clauses. For example, I will highlight main uh, if clauses with green. So if you study hard, this is our if clause, if. If you study hard, you will pass your exam. That's the main clause. You know, we have if you study hard, that's present simple, you will pass the exam. That's future simple. If it rains, if I have time, if you don't hurry, if she gets the job, and if we finish early, these are all if clauses. You will pass, we will, I will, you will, she will. Sometimes negative, she won't, you won't, we won't, and so on. So, clauses. Now, before we move to 
structures, I want you to make some examples. Hmm? Make some examples about if you love me, I will love you. Uh, okay, for example, we can say that. So please make your sentences, make some sentences, some examples. Uh huh. Start making your sentences. That's okay if it's wrong or if some grammar mistakes, it's, it's totally okay. Let's just try your best. Okay. So, if you if you pay me, I'll forgive you. Oh, okay, Nina. If you buy new clothes, you'll you'll be handsome. So we are like those kind of people that say clothes brings you fancy. Well, if I don't do the homework, my teachers will be mad at me. Okay. If you learn ha huh, Java, JavaScript, you would be you would be now. You will be. An Android developer. If you learn Java, you will be an Android developer. If you work hard now, you will have free time later. Okay? As you help me, I will help you. Uh, we can say this sentence. We should make it some change. We will, we will see the thing here. But as long as you help me, I will help you this better. If you practice speaking regularly, you will speak fluently. Okay? If I have some... If I have... If I save enough money, I will visit England. Okay? If I get the good score in the test if I get good scores in the test I will have more chances to get a visa oh why well, use wood ah uh -huh, yeah I told you we cannot use wood for first conditional if you hurt me I'll kill you oh it's kind of threat then where does we use wood in second second conditionals uh, Ruth or Glenn if I had money I would buy a car I don't have money so I cannot buy a car we use in second conditionals. If you study English, you will get a job. If you love yourself, the word will be beautiful. Uh, okay, if you say so. Make sense. Yeah, sense with S. Okay? So, let's move. Structure. Uh -huh. Okay. So, first of all, does anyone, does anyone here know about dependent clauses and independent clauses would you would we use with if I were or what that's second uh, the one a B that's second if I were you I would study English if I were you I wouldn't study English that's second if the parliament approved the law the incumbent will be promote will be promoted will be promoted the passive but that's nice a good sentence if I were, I do. I would. If I were, I would. Thank you. If I were, I would do it. I have no idea. Okay. Anyone here? No clue too. Okay. That's good. No clue. Yes. You can use no clue when you don't know or no idea. Okay. So we have, there, there are some clauses. First of all, clause contains subject plus verb and sometimes object. Uh -huh. Those were... Those were different responses to each. Mm, okay, so, for example, if you study, I ha let me type it for you. If you study, is it a full sentence or when you when I say if you study, are you are you expecting, are you waiting for more information or that's a complete sentence? Like, I am a teacher, is it like this, finish or no, you are waiting for something if you study. Let me know. Writing for information. Aha. Uh -huh. If I were to study, I would score good marks. No, no. Let, let's focus on first condition. Waiting for information, right? You are waiting for. Inf independent clause has a meaning for itself. Aha. Uh -huh, very good. So if you study, does it have a meaning, a full meaning as a sentence? No. Our friend said no. Thank you. What about this? You will pass your exams. What about this? Are you still waiting for more information or not? That's something okay. You will pass your exams. No, nah, aha. Uh -huh. uh, it's complete. No, very good. It's complete. Aha. Uh -huh. 
So, the first one, if you study, this is a dependent clause. It's dependent. You know, we, I'm trying to say, for example, I am an independent person means I rely on my own. I don't want anyone's help. But dependent, the opposite means you need help. So in English, there are some so there are some clauses which are dependent and they need help. So one help, they would be a complete sentence with independent clauses. And independent means they have a meaning, like you will pass your exams. Uh -huh, thank you, Ludwig. Exactly. Therefore, if you start your sentence with your if clause, which is a which is a dependent clause, you need a comma. If you study hard, comma, you will pass your exam, as you can see here. If you study hard, comma, you will succeed. You will pass your exam or whatever. But if you start your sentence with your main clause, with your independent clause, you don't need. You must not. It's better in this case. Because it's not, it's not optional. You must not use commas. You will succeed if you study hard. You will pass your exams if you study hard. Because when I say you will pass your exams, you're not waiting for anything. Therefore, I don't need a comma. And it's like a full sentence. It looks like a full sentence. But if you study hard, there is a gap between that. So when you start your sentences, so the conditional sentences with your if clause, you use a comma. If you start them with uh, with your independent clause, means main clause, you do not use anything. You don't use commas. Yes, the way of writing. Especially it's for it's written English because in speaking, we don't use commas, but you, you you could just wait for example for one second. If you study hard, you will pass your exam, and you will pass your exams if you study hard. It's, it's something like this. Basic examples: If I have time after work, I will go to the gym. We will stay indoors if it rains. Hmm. If you finish your homework tonight, you can watch TV. I will introduce myself if I see her at the party. If we leave now. We can make it to the movie on time and he will pass if he studies hard for the exam. If you come to the party, I will introduce you to my friends. Okay, so here, if clause, okay, so, uh, you know, if clause, main clause, if clause, main clause. Look at the third sentence. If you finish your homework, you can watch TV. Can we use can in first conditional? We said we use future simple is it future simple you can watch it talks about ability i'm saying i can swim you can swim it's not about future hello muhammad 17 can i say you can do something you can is it okay yes yes but we said need use could instead well, uh, I, I need uh, oh i need to use could are you sure you could watch TV? Can we say? If you finish your homework. Which one? So first, is this sentence correct? If you do your homework, you can watch TV. Is it correct, first of all? Or maybe the sentence is wrong. Could is idea of past, Nina says. Okay, I, I will tell you something about could. But, okay, what about the sentence? Is it a correct sentence or that's the wrong one? True, okay, correct, you mean. Yeah, okay. Yes, of course, we can use modal verbs. True, yes, that's correct. We can use modal verbs. Both can and could are right, in my opinion, but it's not the same meaning. Of course, of course, Bryce. We will talk about them. It's modal verbs. We will talk a bit about just this one, not all modal verbs. But, yes, we can use model verbs instead of will as you can remember let me bring it here i told you that uh clauses i told you that the clause we chose the results the tense of it can be or could be the future tense the future simple but the clause we chose the result is your main clause hmm? and for if clause the clause which shows the condition. I have a question. Can I use anything instead of if? Do you have any ideas? Can I use anything instead of if? 
unless, as, okay, anything else. When, aha, uh -huh. good. Anything else? Michi is typing. Everybody, 33 students we have, come on. Can I just say if, 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 or no? I have more options, more alternatives. Whether, oh, you mean, you mean weather like this? Weather, let me reply. That weather is like sunny, rainy, foggy. This is weather, it means if. Yes, that's nice. Weather, we say weather or not, if or not. Yeah, cool. Since, because, because, can we say because? Like what? Because you study hard, you will pass your exam. Can we say because? Does it does it show? Uh, does it show a condition? As long as, in case of, unless. Oh, okay, that's nice. So you know many things about this. Yes, we have a list of words that you can use instead of if in the if clause. Once again, uh, I will I will tell you when we have the examples. Unless okay, so it means means if not. Unless you study, unless you hurry. Do you see we have the sentence? Let me show you. I said, aha, uh -huh, here. If you don't hurry, huh? I have if plus not means I have a negative sentence in my if clause. And I wanna use unless, so I should make it positive. If you don't hurry, so if you hurry. If you hurry, so change if with unless. So Unless you hurry, you will miss the bus. Unless you hurry. It means if you don't hurry. Okay? For example, if it rains, can I say unless it doesn't rain? Tell me. Unless it doesn't rain. Can I say? Unless it doesn't rain. Is it okay? Is it correct? I think so. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, okay. So. Yes, okay. Are you sure about that? Nina, okay. Nina is typing. Let's wait for Nina. Sure. Uh huh. Lubix is sure. What about others? Unless it doesn't rain, I'll be, I'll, I will to the party. What do you mean? I will, I will go to the party. Same wrong to me. So you mean it's, it's not correct. Go, go. Okay, many people are typing. Let's wait for the answers. I now, I know, I now only. What do you mean? I now only if independent clause. What do you mean? I know, ah, no. Okay, K. Okay. I know only if independent clause. Okay, okay. No, we, we have some words to use. But let me tell you guys. The, the second one, I mean the first sentence I wrote. Let me let me circle. Unless you hurry, this is okay. But, unless it doesn't rain, that's wrong. Why? Because whenever you use unless, it has to be positive. That's the point, advanced point. Unless, it should be positive. It has to be positive i mean maybe you see some people say unless it doesn't but technically grammatically we cannot say unless it doesn't unless we don't unless we many things no unless you hurry unless she gets unless she goes unless she dies whatever unless plus positive because because we are saying if if not so whenever we have if not we use unless so why should we use unless not if we have with if we cannot say this is like vice versa no unless means if not we don't have unless not means if we don't have such things so unless after that positive oh it's because we cannot use negative with negative no 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 yes double negative we we can say we can we can interpret it like this in in this way uh is it informal? No, it's not informal. No, no, no. If uh, reversed, on the contrary, it's also formal. 
You see, for example, in some regulations, instructions, for example, I don't know if you've ever been to borders. In borders like this, for example, say, unless, I don't know, you'll get, you will get killed unless you follow the instructions, for example. It's like this. It's, it's formal, and we can see we can see such sentences in like instructions, regulations, guidelines, something like this. It's not informal. Reverse, it's formal, and we can say yes, double negative or something like this because unless means if not, we don't have anything, and after unless we have positive, on the condition that you can use instead of if, when, as Ludwig and others said, when provided that you can say, providing that yes. As long as, yes, suppose, supposing, yes, uh, many things, many things, in case. What is in case? Actually, Ludwig says in case of, that's something else, uh, Ludwig. In, unless, if not, yes. In case of, Ludwig, it's like, say, in case of fire, break the window. It, we have, for example, this kind of instruction. For example, on some buses, for example, vehicles, like this. In case of fire, break the window. Yes. But we say in case of, we say use a noun, not a sentence. In case of a noun, fire, break the window. But in case, then we use a sentence, a clause. Hypothetically, no, no, no. Okay, hypothetically, like what? What do you mean, hypothetically? Let's elaborate. Maybe that's correct. In... Described particular occasions. Like what? Let's first give you some examples. Netizen Z, Price and others. What does it mean? Hypothetically in the, in this point of view. Or let me let me let me tell you with this sentence, how huh? I always say in case it rains in case it rains, I will I will take my umbrella, for example. In case it rains, I'll take my umbrella and B. If it rains, or let me write easier. If it rains, let me wait, 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 wait. If it rains, I will take my umbrella. Please tell me the difference. Maybe that's that's easier. The difference between these two sentences. Usually, in case of, is used on adverbial sentences, right? Um, yeah, let's say, for example, in case of rain, in case of fire. Yes, yes, Nina. Yes. But I'm talking in case, not in case of, no. In case. In case you crash. In case we, 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 we can use, we can actually omit that. It's something, okay, optional. In case that you crash, or in case you crash the car, you can call me, yes. In case of noun, in, in case of sentence. Okay, so, what does it mean? What does it mean, in case of rain? What does it mean, in case? It's like to use if something unusual happens, like what? So, let's talk about the difference between A and B. Hmm? I have A, I have B. Probability, on uh -huh, which one? For which one? For A or B. So, the difference between A and B, please tell me. A, 50% sure you can see the clouds. Uh -huh. 100 sure that you will take the umbrella. So, do I take the umbrella right now for both situations? I mean, without seeing the condition or after seeing the condition. Before it rains or after it rains. No, yes, both are correct, of course. Both are right, both are correct. I want to talk about the difference. So it looked like something uh, said something interesting. We can okay rely on that, but uh, so there is a there is a question. After, after we see the rain or before we see the rain, which one? If the conditional happen, I will certain take my I will certainly take my umbrella in the first. So you see the rain. You see the rain. You see it's raining. Then you take it or no. Before you see the raining, you take it. Which one? You take the umbrella. No. In this moment, the umbrella. 
Uh, okay, thank you. Yes, actually, I can I can get I can understand your meanings here. Thank you. Yes, in sentence A, let's talk about B first. If it rains, we said, if the condition happens, we can we can have the result. If you study hard, this is a condition you will pass your exams. If it rains means now it should be raining. I should see that it's raining. Okay, I can see it's raining. Oh my God, I'm getting wet. So I take out my umbrella. I take my umbrella. Hmm? And I use my umbrella. But in case means right now it's sunny. Right now it's sunny. But last night the weather forecast said that tomorrow we will have, for example, rains. For example. Or no, you just have a feeling or you see the cloud, black cloud, whatever. The point is, right now, it's not raining. So the condition hasn't yet happened. That's the point. The condition hasn't yet happened. But still, you take your umbrella. You still do the results. Well, we don't have the condition. Nothing happened. It's not raining. But you still take it because it says, maybe, like in the evening, it rains. Maybe. I wanna, I wanna be cautious. I wanna be careful about that. So I take my umbrella. Anyway, maybe it rains and maybe it doesn't. You just, you just took your umbrella for nothing. But maybe it rains, so you have, you are prepared. You have the umbrella. That's we can say the difference between in case and if. Sentence A, sentence B. So whenever we use in case, please ask for this question. Whenever we use in case. So, the, uh, for example, in case it rains, is it after raining or before raining? When we use in case it rains, I will take my umbrella. Do I take my umbrella after raining or before raining? Uh -huh. Before, before, before. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, before with E. Thank you very much. Exactly. You take it before because you want to you wanna be prepared, get ready for that. Thank you. The main clause. Now let's talk about some replacements for alternatives for it for will. Hmm? We can use modal verbs, but not would. Technically, if you use would, um, we are talking about we're talking about a hypothetical situation, imaginary situation, that we normally do not use it. But shall, you know, shall we can can be used interchangeably with will to express a future action. Or outcome but we can only use shall to have the meaning of will for only two subjects for only two pronouns subject pronouns do you know do you know anything when can we say shall has the meaning of will no one knows okay so let me tell you when we say I let me change the color when we say I and when we say we, we can use shall after them and it means will. I shall go means I will go. We will go. We shall go, for example. If you come to the party, look at this sentence. We had this. If you come to the party, I shall introduce you to my friends. Look at this part. If you come to the party, I will. We have will here. I will introduce you. I shall introduce you. So it has the same meaning of shall. It's more polite. It's more formal. And it's old English sometimes. Yes, technically old English. Uh -huh. Shall, it's more formal. Yes, shall is like must. No, no, no. Imperative mood. No. First person, uh, yes, yes, we can say, for example, we and I will with certainly, uh, we, we can say, yes, we can, we can say something like this. Shall is like must, no, no, no. Will is, no, no, it's shall is like will. If you have I or V, if you say she shall, no, it means she should. The polite version of she should, some difference, I don't want to talk about, open it up, but if you say she shall, it means she should. He shall means he should, but I shall, it ha it also has a meaning of I will. We shall, we will, it depends on our context. So just I and we, just do. Could, 
It's used to express a possibility or hypothetical situation, but with a greater degree of uncertainty than might. For example, if I work hard this year, I could get a promotion. Let's talk about this. Huh? We have time. So, look at this sentence. Let, let, let me type it for you. Past of can, yes. And if we talk about potentials and chances, for example, you sing and say, oh, you could be a great singer. I Means you have the potentials. In the future, so we can use could for the future when we mean the potential. You have the chance, you have the potential. But uh, I have this question. If I work hard this year, I... Could get a promotion B if I work hard this year I will get a promotion the difference guys please if I work hard this year I could get a promotion if I work hard this year I will get a promotion certainty okay Anyone else? Several people. I love it. First is more uncertain. Like like what? What do you mean uncertain? Potential might could. Okay, I'm talking about will in this then, in this case. Could and will. So potential and also we said could has a greater degree of uh, might. So you should change the symbol a is like you may or may not will express more sureness sureness okay 50 percent or probability 100 percent sure you have some proofs proof the f p r o w f p r o o f the noun that it will happen aha uh -huh, thank you you don't have you don't have sure you are not you are not sure you will get a promotion Aha, uh -huh, thank you, thank you. That's a nice prize. Okay, how can you tell me I'm sure I will get a promotion and I'm not sure I will get a promotion? What does it mean? You are not sure, so what's the point if I work hard? Hmm? What does it mean? You are not sure. But B is without a doubt. Aha, uh -huh, I also think so. I agree, it sounds more certain, okay? Could is more confidently. Mm, these two phrases remember me the difference of in case and if. Am I wrong? Wrong? Uh, no, not not the same difference. I mean, there's something else. Two different things. You don't know if it will happen or not. Okay, so how 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 can I not know if it happens or not? This is my question. You have hesitation about even happening. Okay, why why do I have hesitation? I want the reason. Because you are less confident, um, could be an answer. What else? Who will promote me? Huh? I have a question. Who will promote me? Cause that can or not happen. It doesn't depend on. Aha! Thank you, prize. Perfect. That's lovely. It doesn't depend on you to get the promotion. It depends on your boss. Thank you. Thank you. Let me react that. Yes. That way is better. So exactly. It doesn't it doesn't depend on you. You work hard. Yes. You try your best, you do your best, everything, 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 but you don't get a promotion. Your boss doesn't like you. Or there is another co-worker of yours or is a colleague of yours, for example, who worked harder than you. You think you work hard, but he worked harder. So he got the promotion or your boss says, okay, yes, I know you've worked hard, but I don't want to promote you. I'm your boss. So the point is, it doesn't depend on you. Thank you, Price, for saying this. It doesn't depend on you. It depends on some external side effect, external things, we can say. Your boss, colleagues, your opponents, many things. So for good. Should. Well, we use should. It's more like to expect something or to say a likely outcome. Mostly like will. 
if you study hard you should pass the exam it means you will pass the exam and we can say like you should pass the exam I expect I expect that if you study hard well you should pass the exam technically usually when people study hard they pass their exam so don't worry you should pass it it has this meaning or we can say like for example uh, likely outcome you say yes you will pass the exam mostly they are the same can a likely outcome talks about ability it talks about ability if I leave work on time I can make it to the concert if I leave work on time I can make it to the concert you're sure that you will make it to the concert but you don't say will factor yeah thank you I was, I was looking for the word factors but you are looking you are you're not sure I mean there are something else for example I can make it to look at this sentence in my PDF let me highlight it if I leave work on time I can make it to the concert and if I leave work on time I will make it to the concert tell me the difference please again I can make it to the concert I will make it to the concert we know will it's true so if we say that for example we are sure about it we will do it and, okay I know is the problem on my side or the no it is is my microphone low is, there, is my sound okay I don't think you because no one said anything I think it's okay Mike is okay thank you so tell me I can it's okay thank you thank you so tell me I can so the difference I can make it I will make it hmm? will 100% maybe they will make it but they think maybe they will make it but they think they will make it so maybe they will make it but they think they will make it so what what does it mean I, I didn't get the second one Shin will express promise no 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 promise yes if you for example I will help you yes that's that's for future simple not something else it's it's it's, it's express promise instant decision plans or pl not plan technically or we can say a, a prediction without evidence that's something else using can mean that you have the capacity of make but will uh -huh. okay uh, like you think you can make a better ability and and based on the situation okay uh, if I have time I have time now I have time I should go to the cinema I should go to the movies hmm? What did I say? Make it to the concert. Okay, here, concert. I should go to the concert. I should go to a place that the concert is being held. What if there is traffic? Hmm? What if I crash? What if my car breaks down? What if something happens? Hmm? What if I die? Whatever, I mean. What if something happens? Hmm? What about this? Will is more like a wish. Uh, wish. Mm, not technically, but some cases we can say. I never heard will is a wish, but yes, if you said it, I will. No, if I said it, I will, or you will pass your exam, we can say, but not all the time. Intention, a possibility. No, no, for example, you, okay, you, you, have, you, have, you have free time, you have time, now you want to go to the concert, you're driving. Something happens, you crash, you know, it's traffic, it's like, for example, you, you have a flat tire, your, your engine turns off, whatever, you don't make it. So, when you say, can, here means, well, I'm sh if I have time, I'm sure about my side, my internal factors, that I will make it. But maybe something happens, so I cannot promise you, if I have time, I can make it to the concert. If it if and if nothing happens, hello Sasa. Will is an expression of will to do something. Will is an expression of will. What do you mean? Like for example, okay, 
if the baby sleeps early today, we can watch a late night. Yeah, for example. Using can because if something... Uh-huh, un thank you. Unexpected, exactly. Unexpected, some, something that are out of your control. Okay, there's traffic. You cannot do it. You cannot handle it. But when you say will, let me tell you. The, the base form is will, okay? We can, we, can, we can get the meaning. We can get our point and we can talk about our points. All of them, can, could, might, you know, should, shall, with will. But that's very basic. We're talking about the advanced point of view. And in daily life, as a daily conversation, we can use, for example, can, could, shall, something like this, to have a better understanding of the situation. I can say if I, if I work hard, I will get a promotion. And I, for example, next year, I don't get. It's something okay. You understood my point. But using these models can make it more clear. So don't think if you use will in this case, that's something else. No, we cannot say 100% sure about anything. We cannot be 100% sure about anything we say. If you study hard, I will pass my exam. What, what if, for example, uh, I get sick? I go under the weather. I am under the weather. It's been sick the exam day, exam night, whatever. Hmm? For example, I'm go. I'm using a bus. I'm, I'm, go, I'm on a bus to go to the exam, exam center, whatever. Well, something happens. Uh, I, I, I got there late. Whatever. So we cannot say 100% sure something will happen. It's still, it's like at least, at, at most, 99. Okay, so this is the point we should understand for first conditionals. We cannot say anything 100% sure. One might... You said might say less certainty and said great a could has a greater degree is it says uh, actually less certainty than will and could so if I have time I might go to the gym it means well I have time now okay we have the condition I might go to the gym maybe I'm not on the mood maybe I have more things to do maybe I have other things which are more important to do or maybe for example. I don't like, I don't want to go to the gym today. Many reasons. But if I have some, I might go to the gym. So technically here, it also depends on some other things. If you want to open it. But let's have some example. In case you miss the train, call me and I'll pick you up. Should you need any help? Uh-huh, this is the inversion. If you, we can say for example, mm, if you should need, we say like this. If you should need any help, feel free to ask me. Should you need? It means if you need. Should you need any help, feel free to ask me. Provided that it's not too expensive, I will buy the book. Book, no, book. Unless you change your mind. If you don't change your mind, we will meet at the restaurant tonight. Or in the restaurant is better because we don't didn't mention the name. As long as you are careful, you can try the new skateboard. If the weather holds up, we shall go on a picnic tomorrow. In the event... Uh, no, that's, that's, uh, that's not correct. Provided that the flight is cancelled... We will take the train, for example. As soon as I finish my work, I will go for a walk. Should the flight be delayed, we will have to reschedule, schedule, American, schedule, British, our meeting. In case you forget, I will remind you. Questions, okay, we have only two pages here. Any questions, guys? Any questions you have, okay? We can ask questions, okay? You should use the main clause to ask technically but you can also use the if clause for example if you go to bed early tonight what will you do with the extra time in the morning with a questioning tone what or we can say like this what will you do if you get there in good time in good time we have different kind of expressions for time i have a video on my youtube i said seven time expressions uh, we say in good time on time in time for example in good time and something like this there is a video there you can you can watch it it means for example 30 minutes sooner what will you do if your son doesn't study well what will the government do if we don't pay our taxes or something like this it's more common to ask question with second conditional imaginary for example what would you do if you had 10 million dollars what would you do would what would you do if you were if you were a billionaire whatever like this what would you do if you were Superman I mean for kids 
Imperative. Imperative means to order, to command. We can make it with first conditional. Instead of the if clause, we have imperative clause. Imperative clause means without subject. I do know. I do my, for example, you do your homework. Remove you. Do your homework. That's imperative. If you want to pass your exams, study hard. If you don't want to get fired, get your act together. What does it mean, guys? What's the meaning of get your act together? What does it mean? Get your act together. The teacher, for some reason, I can't enter in the link that you wrote in the chat. Why? Ah, uh, oh, you mean the website? Um, you know, I made this website with WordPress. And WordPress has banned some countries. I didn't do it. WordPress did. So if you use a VPN or a proxy or something like this, your problem will be solved. Yes, I didn't do it. Once again, the WordPress did it. Question. If I leave now, I could take the bus. If I leave now, I should take the bus. What's the difference? Or they're the same. Uh, if I leave now, I could take the bus. Means if I leave now, there is a chance. There is a chance that I can take the bus. For example, at the bus shelter, you know, bus station and bus shelter is like the, the thing, the roof of the bus station that prevents you from getting wet, uh, rain, for example, because it's bus shelter. So if I leave now, I have the chance in sentence A, but if I leave now, I should take the bus, means I should take the bus, like technically, uh, I expect myself to take it, it's like it's something logical, logic. And, well, I will. It has a meaning of will. I should take the bus. Means, Or maybe you're, you're suggesting yourself. Well, if I leave now, I should take the bus. Means it's better. It's better to take the bus. We can say like this for uh, sentence B. Oh, is it mean put yourself together? What does it mean? Put yourself together. But you put yourself together like what? Take your responsibilities. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh -huh. advice. Yeah, we can say advice here too. You're advising yourself. That's the point. Or you're saying, well, it's better. You're welcome. So, get your act together means behave well. Behave well. For example, in a class, as a student, you are using your phone, or were using your phone, or you are, for example, sleeping, or you are, for example, talking with your friends. You're not behaving well. Say, for example, for example, Jack. Get your act together it means behave well, behave better, or behave if you are not. So, if you want to buy a new house, get a job. If you want to be a successful entrepreneur, take risks and pursue your ideas. Okay, that's like a, motiv a motivational sentence. If you want to reduce the stress, practice mindfulness and relaxation techniques regularly. Okay, we can use an exclamation mark. To emphasize that the speaker is ordering, is giving orders to someone. For example, if you want to pass your exam, study hard. It's like the, the, the tone should be like this. If you want to pass your exams, study hard. I mean, come on, study hard. It's like this. You want to motivate someone, something like this. But advanced tip. We use the present continuous tense. Like, if you are working late tonight, to describe a temporary or ongoing, we say, for example, ongoing or continuous situation. On the other hand, we can use the future perfect tense, if you will have finished your work by then, to describe a hypothetical future situation. Do you remember I told you we can use simple tense, sorry, sorry present tense and future tense for if clause and uh, main clause, respectively? Here we have respectively means in order. So here, once again, we can use, for example, if you will have done your homework, you can watch TV. Or if you are, if you are, if you are working late tonight, we can postpone or put out, uh, put, um, put off, we can say. The phrase over put off or postpone our meeting, for example, for example, like this. If you will have finished your work by tomorrow, you can play, I don't know, video games, for example. You can play video games, something like this. So, based on your meaning, based on your situation, you can use 
uh, tenses of present and future, not just simple present, different things. An example, so yes, I have like 20 examples there. Yes, if you want to get these 20 examples and the PDF itself and something like this, you can head over to my website. Oh, it said 93,000. Now we have 150,000. Oh. So, English with the com. Go to my website and download the PDF for free. And um, anything also, I've record I've been recording this video, the video of class, so I will put it on my YouTube. I will have it uploaded on my YouTube with my by my admin for Sunday. Yes, by Sunday. Or maybe Saturday. I don't know. Maybe Saturday, maybe Sunday. I'll try to uh, make it at, at most Sunday. So, thank you, everybody. Do you have any questions to ask me? Uh, our class is over. Uh, please, please let me know your feedback about our class in my in my DM, the direct messages. You can send me a message telling me your opinion about the class because your feedback helped me to improve the quality of the class, and that would be nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank for the class. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you for attending. I hope you... I've learned something new. Thanks for your effort. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Jimmy, just a, just a superhuman. Flex, Nina, Raheen, and others. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you. Could you please show us a complete example with the advanced tip? Okay, okay. Let me write it for you. For example, for example, if you if you have if you have done your homework. Your homework, homework, let me write like this. You can watch TV if you have done your homework and, and, for example, you, you can, you can play video games if you, or no, for example, mm, For example, if you will have, if you will have done, if you will have done the tasks, you can, if you will have done, yes, we can say, whatever, like, if you will have done the task, you can play some video games, or you will, you will have, to, you will have had the chance to play video games if you do something. I mean, it depends on the situation. Now I cannot remember anything. Um, for example, if you are ah, here, if you will have finished your work by then, you can watch TV. We can use future perfect tense in this. If you will have finished, here we have the example. If you will have finished your homework by tomorrow, you can play video games. It's something like this. It's not very common. I mean, you have the chance to use it, but if you want, you have the chance, and if you have the situation, the context, the scenario, you can use. But technically, it's not like a very common thing you use present, you use future perfect. But present perfect, yes, we can. One, two, three, or mixed, which one? Ah, uh -huh, that was first, that was first. First conditionals. Will you please upload this lesson? Yes, yes, yes. I will have it done by my admin for like by t by Saturday. I can say, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody. Have a lovely day. If you have any questions, please ask me. Otherwise, we can go. We can call it a day. It means to have a to have a break. Take a break. We can call it a day. Or for me, it's night, so we can call it a night. How many tenses exist in English? Tenses. So we have three tenses. Future, simple, future, present, past. For better word, we have 14 tenses, if you want to say like this. We have, for example, uh, 12 tenses. We have past simple, past perfect, and continuous forms of each of them. Like past perfect continuous, past simple continuous, future simple, or future simple continuous, future perfect, future perfect continuous, I don't know, future simple, future simple continuous, present perfect, present perfect continuous, 12 uh, tenses we can say. 
Okay, have a good day, everybody. Let me end the class and enjoy your day or night, maybe. 12, yes. We have three uh, main tenses, like, for example, present, f future, and past. Each of them has four, uh, for example, tenses like that. For example, of continuous, perfect, perfect, continuous, simple. So, three times four, 12, if you know math. Thank you very much. Goodbye.